Good morning, F5 fans. Uh, I wanted to give a little update on the the wings here and the landing gear um, while I'm waiting for epoxy to dry on the intake ducts. I moved over to the uh, the landing gear and the wings because I wanted to start work on redesigning the landing gear. So, like everything, seems like everything about this model, I'm not happy with the way it came from the factory. So I'm demolishing it first and then rebuilding it. So. A couple problems I had with the landing gear uh, on this plane were, one, they were uh, not scale. The height of the landing gear is very squatty and short. And number two, the wheels were really tiny. And if you watch videos of the Skymaster F5, you'll see how kind of squatty they look and tiny tires that don't look realistic and all those kind of things. And that's the kind of stuff that bugs me. I like the aircraft silhouette to look right and the tires to be the right size, all that. So um, I had that to address, so I wanted to try to get longer struts and uh, larger tires, and I knew all those might require like remounting the gear. So um, on top of that, I also noticed from all the videos of the F5 flying is the landing gear, the main gear are too far back, too far aft for the CG. So the plane tends to pop up instead of smoothly rotate. So again, that would require a complete redo of the landing gear mounts to get the landing gear moved further forward. So um, I started off the project with number one, finding appropriately sized wheels. So I'll, I can show you here. These are the Skymaster stock wheels, which are, I believe they're about three and a quarter inch. And you know, they, they look pretty dang small on this model. Um, especially when you look at the wheel wells of the airplane and how big they are these are drastically undersized um not exactly sure why they did that their strut has enough size to it uh their offset to accommodate a larger wheel but that's the way they did it back then so i searched around and i ended up finding and of course these are these are pneumatic they've got pneumatic brakes and all that um what i ended up finding was some esm four inch wheels so this, my research shows that scale wheels on a 1.6 F5 are actually four and a half inch because I looked at the, what the looked up what the real tires were and just scaled them by 1.6 but those won't fit on these offsets these oleos and also um, they actually look I tried some four and a half and they actually for whatever reason look too big so I found some nice ESM um, very very nice I didn't even know these wheels existed so they're ESM I believe from just the aircraft kit manufacturer four inch a really nice um, two-piece alloy hubs that are very light and it's not a solid rubber tire that's the other thing about the Skymaster ones these things weigh a ton it's solid rubber so this this gear feels like it weighs like almost a pound so these are a hollow rubber with a foam insert so these even though they're larger than these tires they weigh half as much these are 80 grams and these are like 150 so this is a, a good win in, in both scale size and also the uh, the weight helps too. So, but of course, uh, the larger, uh, the, the larger wheel actually in and of itself doesn't require any modifications. It fits perfectly in the, in the wheel well. Um, but I also wanted to move the gear out because that's another thing is part of the reason why the, the gear is so short and stubby and T-Rex like on the F5 is because the gear mounted so far inboard on an F5. The, the gear are mounted way out on the wing. It's like a third or more of the way out on the wing. So these are mounted artificially way inboard. Um, maybe just to keep the strut. I don't know what they were doing, but they're way inboard. The whole wing's not scale, so it, it kind of makes sense that this isn't either. So anyways, I needed to move this out on the wing. Um, and also I wanted to try to move it forward. So what I came up with, as you can see over here, is I just popped the um, original mounts out, which was um, way too easy to do uh, because Skymaster plywood, the, the ply, the bottom, you know, the surface ply that's everything is glued to just pops right off. So it doesn't matter, matter how much glue you use, it just pops out, but there also wasn't much glue on these. So I'm glad I took them out anyways and putting in, gonna put in new uh, landing gear brackets. So um, you can see here, the results of my work are I got the gear uh, moved outboard by almost three quarters of an inch and forward by about half an inch. And that's about as far as I can go because lurking up in here is the, the spar. 
and I really can't go much further than that. So that even required taking my Robart 635s and I trimmed, you can see the mount here, it's been trimmed a bit and beveled a little so that it can slide up in here like so and be mounted. So obviously some of the mount holes will have to be re-drilled and repositioned or I'll have to kind of do something weird where I have a, a hole that's outside of the gear door here where I can glue to a elongated mount that'll go between these ribs. So that the redoing of the mounting should be easy. I was also able to get the retract lower. So the retract basically rests on the upper wing skin. So that gets the retract low enough where the gear door will clear it. Whereas stock, the landing gear on the backside actually sit proud. So the landing gear door can't even actually fit properly because the top of this is even with the wing skin. So that would have been a problem too. So I've solved like four or five problems by doing this work. Also the problem of the landing gear probably falling off because the mounts were barely glued on. So let's call it six problems solved. Um, so anyways, this is in. Um, I this, is a still, this still has the air cylinder on it. I haven't converted this to electric yet. I just grabbed this one um, because I was still kind of in the work of converting the other one to electric and made the mod. So now this is dedicated to the right wing here. Um, so I'm stoked about this. It's going to have a better stance. It's going to have, I'll obviously have to make a custom strut. So I'm not going to use the scale. I'm going to use the scale Leo's, but I'll take these apart and I'll make a new, um, probably just a round, just get some round aluminum and turn that and bore it. And I can always add scale features on later on with 3D print stuff to make it look like a scale strut. But for now, it's about getting it going. So, um, so anyways, oh, I wanted to show too. So I did convert this gear now. So this is converted to electric. Um, using a JP actuator, the same as they have on an ER120. I just ordered an extra actuator and converted this, and I'll, I'll show it more in a second here. But um, but you can see here, I'll, I've got the retract hooked up, so I can run the servo tester here, and you can actually see the, the electric Robart actuate. So this conversion only cost about 30 bucks compared to buying an electric. Well, they don't even make an electric version of the 635, the low profile. Um, so it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's one of the easiest gear I've converted yet to electric. So it, it was pretty simple. You can pretty much do it with just tools you have laying around the shop. No special tools required. And just finding some, some good pins and things to use. Um, but yeah, so I mean, once I get this thing modified, the gear will be, I get the other, I have to get the other gear modified to electric. Um, and like literally the conversion takes about one hour per gear if that um and then the gear will basically be once i make the new mounts and remove i have to modify this wing still and get the new mounts in there the wing will be good to get the gear will be good to go so i have not decided what i'm going to do with brakes yet i would like to have electric brakes on this um, i'll have to figure out a way to adapt to mount the jp brakes to these hubs which shouldn't be a big deal it just requires a few of the screws to be protruding to engage with the the JP um, disc brake, or the disc for the brakes. Um, anyways, that's that's pretty much it. I'm stoked to get through this part. This was kind of on my mind of trying to figure out or wondering if I was going to be able to improve the gear at all. So it'll be, you know, getting getting the new uh, plates made to mount the gear, and um, and then the last thing will be, of course, to hinge the gear doors and figure out how I'm going to do that. That'll just be, probably just be a wire tied off to the, the strut that'll automatically close the doors when the gear goes down. That's a pretty standard setup for these planes. So yeah, so I'm stoked. Uh, oh, in, in, in case someone is wondering why I don't just use an ER120, which I wanted to do, is just use one of these and not have to use the Robarts and convert them, is that even though the, the 120s are not giant gear, this is still taller than a 635. So the Robart 635s were sort of made for this plane. It was actually part of uh, Skymaster had spec them for the um, F5 because it was one of their first kits. And Robart made the 635 for this plane, essentially. And then I think they've used them on many since because it's it's actually, like I said, when you when you break it down, it's because of the way the the... JP gear are, it is about an eighth of an inch 
lower. It's a good low profile gear. These are really nice and they're light. They're very light gear for its size, especially, you know, the air cylinder weighs more than the electric motor you put on. So you're not adding any weight going to electric. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm stoked. This is going to be a sweet electric setup. Uh, but I will, I will just use these for the nose gear. It's just going to be a, it's actually this unit right here, this 95 degree to make sure that I can pull the nose gear, the, the wheel up high enough into the fuselage. So I did a 95 degree one. So yeah, I'm stoked. Landing gear, troubles alleviated. So for me, uh, gotta stop this fun here and get back to sanding ducting plugs, which has become the bane of my existence now, but I gotta get those ducts done. Once the ducting is done, uh, that'll be probably the largest amount of labor completed on this build. And, uh, and then, yeah, then we can move on to doing this final assembly stuff and get this thing in the air. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.